All right, well, is it really so difficult to accept the message of Hamid Ansari? Does he represent perhaps a school of thought which is no longer trendy, it's no longer fashionable, and perhaps it's no longer acceptable? That's what we're looking at today. Joining us to debate this, Sunil Alag, Yogendra Yadav, Professor Ashutosh Vashni, and Sonal Mansingh. I'd like to thank all of you very much for being uh, with us. Yogendra Yadav, I'll come to you first. The ambience of acceptance that he's spoken about, uh, the fact that he says that Indianness of any citizen being questioned is a disturbing thought. Is this perhaps the vision of an elder statesman, a statesman who is no longer vice president, and views which tragically are not in sync with the reality we see all around us in India today? I'm glad the Vice President spoke, even if on the last day. Um, and frankly, I really wished he had spoken earlier. And a Vice President speaking is not something that goes against constitutional propriety. Uh, I did not, I would not want a Vice President to play parties in politics, but speaking out on big questions of the day is the constitutional responsibility of those who hold positions like this. And yes, it is difficult to hear what he says because this, this is the bitter truth about India. I must say in the same breath that uh, those who hold secular ideals have made it more difficult for people to hear, listen to them. For one, because they have been not very consistent. Uh, anyone who talks about the climate against minorities today must remember 1984, must remember what happened two Muslims in Malayana, Meerut, during Congress regime. Uh, we must remember 2002 and everything else. So we need to be consistent. Also, those who speak secular language do not unfortunately manage to relate to the popular, uh, popular vocabulary language in which ordinary people speak today. But for all those limitations, the fact is that today minorities of any kind are under threat Okay. Being a Muslim in this country has been reduced to being a second-rate citizen without any law being changed, without constitution being changed. Okay. This is a cli climate of intimidation of the kind that this country has never witnessed in the past. Okay. And someone has to speak about it. All I'm right. glad he spoke. But I really wish that it is not confined only to his speak. Every conscious Indian has to acknowledge this. Okay. Um, Sunil Alag, uh, Kailash Vish, uh, Vijay Vargya today said he couldn't talk like this before, but now he is outgoing in search of a political role. He's making such statements that are inappropriate. Was it really necessary uh, to, to politicize the remarks made by uh, the outgoing vice president? He would argue perhaps that his remarks weren't political at all. They were an observation. Yeah, I think I would uh, agree with uh, the remark that the vice president doesn't normally make it. And, and I wish if our new vice president to be, uh, Mr. Venkaya Naidu, didn't have anything to say because he should not have made the statement either that this is political or whatever. He should stay out of it because in another 24 hours he's going to be the vice president. See, the problem in India is that we are confusing secularism or nationalism or patriotism with religion. Now, that is the big dangerous point that is taking place in this country because look the the english oxford dictionary of patriotism is a guy who loves his country and is ready to defend it yes. nationalism is taking it to an extreme and these are the two the, i draw a difference between the two so patriotism anyone who is not a patriot for his country and is not does not like it is not ready to defend it i think i'm against them but nationalism is something which takes place when you decide to take it to an extreme either through religion or through something else and that is the dangerous element because today it's not just a minority when you talk about minority i see a headline saying muslims are ill at ease but there are many minorities in india so i think the press should also not just keep highlighting muslim versus hindus hindus but, who eat but meat mr alag the reason that also, that has are, been are threatened today because in many parts of india but mr alag the reason that that has been a headline yeah, sure. is simply because we refer to look, muslims today and if you look at the numbers and the statistics in the first 6 months of 2017 okay, i thought he had referred to 20 cow terror but, attacks were reported yeah. more than 75% of the 2016 figure so it's based on a certain reality 
That isn't to say that there haven't been yeah, attacks on, think, on, on, on the yeah, majority or Vishnu other religions or anything of this sort. Now, if you take... I, it's just he, what he yeah. was referring to. Look, I think I'm against it all and I'm just saying... The on, I agree with Yogendra Yadav, one, one last point, that look, there's no point in making these statements when you're no longer in power. You should make these statements when you are there. And uh, I, I would criticize Hamid Ansari for only one point, that lots of people start saying and lots of bureaucrats also the moment they leave suddenly become holier than thou attitude. Look, what did you do when you were in power? You are doing a great disservice to people when you are in power and you don't speak for them. Okay. If people can't speak for themselves, you should speak out for them. So Look, when you do it at the end, you actually I want to destroy get a response the purpose on that for which you are making the statement. And Pro that's all I'm going to say. Professor Ashutosh Varshni, uh, would you agree with what Sunil Alag is saying that as the Vice President of India, as the Chairperson of the Rajya Sabha, Hamid Ansari could have perhaps articulated these views uh, earlier on? Or do you believe because of propriety he was constrained from making these, the, the, these remarks? And if indeed he was constrained in the past, then wouldn't it be correct for the BJP to say that these are political remarks which he couldn't make then and he is making now because he can? Yeah. Well, um, I think, uh, first of all, Yogendra is right to say that um, it is perfectly within the constitutional propriety of the, of the office uh, for the vice president to comment on the security or insecurity of minorities. Uh, India's constitution does say uh, in many, many uh, places uh, in several places, that uh, the country doesn't belong only to the only uh, belong to the dominant uh, religion. Country belongs to all religions of India, and if some religious communities, especially minority communities, are feeling insecure, then it's perfectly within the constitutional responsibility of the president or vice president to air uh, uh, views to that effect. So I think Yogendra is right about that. However. It is very hard, uh, purely pragmatically speaking, for the president or vice president to make those statements if the government of the day, the real executive of the day, has anti-minority credentials or, or, it's an, or is exhibiting anti-minority conduct. Because the president and vice president also have to listen to the executive. So you, you basically get a contradiction between the constitutional responsibility of the president and vice president and the, and the, and the political pragmatism that, uh, they, that, govern, that would govern their behavior. Mr. So, Mr. Yes, Alag, you, Mr. Alag, you disagree uneasy. with that? Before yes, I go Muslims across to Sonal Man Singh, you're nodding India. your head. Mr. Alag, you had a point to make? No, no, I, I think, you know, I, I'm shaking my head only to the extent to say that to tar the whole government with the brush that they are the ones who are saying that, look, this is a great idea. Look, the Prime Minister has come out and spoken very strongly against all this lynching on cow vigilantism and everything else. So the Vice President could have easily have said, look, here the Prime I Minister disagree. is saying it and I want to echo the same thing. So don't tar the whole government by saying, look, that look, the entire government is trying to... No make uh, the whole country okay. religious in okay. one direction okay. and they are supporting I, 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 it. That's I, I what I'm against. Across. So please let's keep okay, this I debate to a little line. more. Uh, I'm trying to elevate the debate beyond sure. no, no, blaming and we people. Aren't, we, are, we, aren't, we aren't going to have a, a fight in that sense on this program. <clears throat> Mrs. Man Singh, I'm sorry to have kept Absolutely. you waiting. Uh, Absolutely. You know, one of the points mentioned by Mr. Ansari was, he, he, you know, he, he's disturbed that the Indianness of any citizen is questioned all the time. If you say something, and it's a fact, just look at social media, if you say something that doesn't reflect a majoritarian standpoint, you become a Pakistani. You have to prove your patriotism to the country on a daily basis. He, he, he's worried about this. He considers it a breakdown of Indian values. Uh, isn't there a fundamental truth in what Mr. Ansari is saying? Do we need to prove our patriotism every single day? I think that's an exaggeration. But first of all, let me uh, disagree with Professor Vashne. He directly uh, seems to accuse uh, Prime Minister Modi as being anti-minority. And I think that's an absolutely uncalled for, unacceptable tag. <laughs> 
uh, having said that, I, I don't agree with you either uh, or whoever says that on a daily basis we have to prove our Indianness. You, you, we pick up somebody said something and then it goes on and on rolling and then it becomes a template and then uh, there are great debates on that. Mm -hmm. Other thing is that um, when the triple talaq debate begins or the common civil code debate begins, so many issues which have been swept aside or kept on the back burner, which for an uh, independent country, 70 years of independence, we have not been able to bring these issues into play and work them out, see them to their logical conclusion, resolution. So when these things, issues are raised about time to, then suddenly the, 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 the a cry of minorities being in trouble. Now, as, as uh, rightly said by Venkaya Naidu or by Yogendra Yadav or all your other participants, that um, there are other minorities as well. There are Sikhs and there are Jews and there are Parsis but, and there but are. But ma'am, but uh, Mrs. Man Singh, that that uh, that that, that is and that and nobody so many, is justifying I mean, violence against anybody, and no one no one is, is is saying that. Look, you know, I mean, violence against anybody correct. is is condemnable. But it's, it's, it's we say condemnable, that but all it, the time. The reason is not to be repeated. What yeah, I'm it saying can't, it is, can't be. It's 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 unthinkable. But I think the point what I'm saying is that the word secular applies to everyone. There are Hindus in so many no, it does. parts of but India. But the point who is that being, let's not are, let's not really forget the reality really that we way. exist but in I India think today. I, that, listen, listen, yeah. listen, Vishnu. Listen, one second, one second. That that of course, after ten years for Mr. Ansari to wake up on the last day almost of his tenure yep. ending is something strange. But chalo, he woke up. Good. Okay. I think it does not behove uh, the office of the vice president to say this in such a way that is really hurting. It All right. says India, the, the climate has changed, th things are not okay, right. Okay, Professor Vashne, uh, come on. I Professor mean, Vashne, I'm last, sorry. last word to you, it doesn't behove yeah. Hamid Ansari to have yeah. said this quickly. Yeah. Well, no. Uh, Vishnu, and yeah. uh, I mean, I, I fundamentally disagree with Mrs. Man Singh. I have studied Hindu-Muslim relations now for 20 years. I've written books on it. And last two months in India that I've been, I've, I've traveled across the length and breadth of India. I have talked to a lot of Muslims, privileged Muslims, Muslim drivers, cabbies, Muslim uh, peons, Muslim attendants, uh, as well as Muslim middle class. I haven't found even one in the last two months of my stay in India and travels. Even one Muslim who, is feel, who says he is feeling secure. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not sure what kind of India Mrs. Man Singh is talking about. She has to travel and Absolutely. talk to people or study like India, I do, Professor which Vashne. I've done for 20 I years. I also travel all around, I'm To appreciate, sorry. appreciate how insecure Yadav Muslims are. I speak to are. people freely. How insecure Muslims okay, are. Professor and other minorities also are, but Muslims Yogin. are especially insecure. Professor Yadav, quickly, quickly, last 30 seconds. I have, I, I have Mr. Narayan Murthy waiting. Yeah. We don't want to do that. Mr. Yadav, last point. Go ahead. <laughs> Professor Varshney is absolutely right. If this is not something that we can talk about, then I don't know what should we be talking about. We should say all our prime ministers should yeah, get up first thing in the morning, president and vice president, and say this country is glorious. Let us stop using words like communal. Mr. Togaria is not communal. Mr. Ovesi is not communal. There is no communal person in this country. Who Everything is lovely this? about this country. Let's parrot it every day. Otherwise, I, I want know. my constitutional functionaries to alert me when constitutional values are being threatened. Okay. This is why they sit in those offices. Yes, we should criticize Mr. Ansari for not Mr. saying Yadav, it earlier, but enough. at least once I'm he sorry, has spoken the truth. Enough. And okay. even if the like last thank day, all let of us you. bow our head and say, thank you, you spoke the truth at least on one day. All right. I'd like to thank all of you very much for joining us.